Hi, I'm Paul Mark Goulet, and I want to invite you to join me and our team on the journey. It's a program, honestly, about you. My friend told me the other day, Paul, with your counseling background and the fact I started counseling centers and I've trained leaders around the world, he says, you need to bring people on a journey. I said, I don't want to really do television. He says, listen, you're going to be Yoda and they're going to be Luke. They're going to change the world. They're going to defeat the darkness. I go, wow, I can relate to that because I'm a Star Wars fan and I'm a Star Trek fan too. So listen, we want you to join us in the journey and we're going to bring you to a place where you start connecting the dots of your life reinterpreting the pains of your past and starting to seize a new direction you're going to get healthy and healthy people grow and healthy businesses grow healthy churches grow so would you join the journey i love ctn and what an honor to be on the station i know they care about you and i care about you i'll see you soon on the journey Hey, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I've got some great guests that are going to be joining us in just a few minutes. I've got Frank Holland, who's a rock star through the Dream Center. And during the coronavirus and some of the issues that are going on, hundreds of thousands have lost their jobs, either on furlough or full uh, dismissal. Uh, but Frank and our Dream Center and Linda and the gang are feeding thousands and thousands and thousands of people and you're going to hear about these stories. But also, I'm asked Ron Pertaro, who's a, a law professor who gave up that career to stay in Las Vegas and to make a difference in Las Vegas. He, he's a consultant with companies, with the uh, city. He's uh, an amazing man. He's been my friend for 27 years. It's a long time. And he's also a crisis expert. He helps negotiate. He helps people get through crisis. Um, and I wanted to bring some pros on tonight, like these two gentlemen, to walk you through. And then I've got Pasquale, who's going to get up and share for a minute and just pray for you. Uh, this is a, a significant night. And I wanted to start with a Bible study. And you're going to laugh at this because I was, uh, here we are. They've been recording all day long for worship sets to make sure we've got something amazing for you. I'm not sure if you watched last Sunday uh, on our campus here. The, the mountain campus, if you watched our Dream Center, our Dream Center alone had 6,800 people watch. It was amazing. And so thousands and thousands of you watched, and I'm, I'm so thrilled that what the enemy meant for harm, God's turning for good, for the saving of many souls. I want to tell you something, and for the equipping of the saints, and you're the saints. So I want to talk about something that came to me actually today in the shower. It uh, was birthed in me. Uh, a few weeks ago when I was teaching our, our lead program, these are people going for their bachelor's degree here in our lead academy. Um, they are generally full-time employees somewhere, and they're coming on a Wednesday night for uh, training for their businesses and ministry, and even for a college degree. I was teaching, and I've been teaching a, the principle called the VAT, which some of you know me know that's one of my primary uh, revelations that I got many, many years ago. To understand that everything I see and everything I feel and everything I hear, I interpret through my VAT. So I've showed that to you many, many times. For those of you who knew, uh, the VAT is your heart. The Bible says, my heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. <laughs> Freud called it your, what your, he called it your, uh, ego, your super ego and your id. <laughs> well, we as Christians call it our heart. Uh, and when we're looking at this concept of the VAT, I was teaching on it, on how in our, we've got two sections of that. We've got our conscious side, which I'm semi-conscious right now. Hopefully you are too. The unconscious side is the biggest part of my consciousness. 1 Corinthians 13 says this, Love never ends, but where there are prophecies, they'll be set aside. Where there are tongues, they will cease. If there's knowledge, it will be set aside. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when what is perfect comes, the partial will be set aside. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I set aside childish ways. Verse 12. For now we see in a mirror indirectly. Then we'll see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I'll know fully. Just as I'm fully known. This scripture came to my mind again that night when I was teaching lead. And it says that basically we don't live with the facts of our life. Remember, everything that comes in is filtered through our consciousness and our unconsciousness. And it comes out distorted. My mentor who's now in heaven says, I don't live with the facts of my life. 
I live with the interpretation of the facts of my life. So here we are going through one of the worst crises we've ever seen. The coronavirus around the world, over half a million people infected. Thousands and thousands have died. Many, the majority have recuperated, but it still is a virus. It's, they call it a pandemic. Well, when you look at this, you and I can experience this in a super negative way based on our past experiences, based on our VAT. And what, what really came to mind that night when I was teaching it, and I was reminded in the shower today, is that in our VAT, in this unconscious part of who we are, who we are our hearts, our minds, we've got this We've got these factories. These are these are uh, like everything you feel and see and, and hear. You're going to filter it through that factory, and it recycles it. You know, you go to any factory. I don't know if there's a picture on your screen, but you go to any factory. They they take raw product and they produce something, whether it's a car or they take raw sewage and it's drinkable water or, or something of the sort. Factories take raw product and and uh, reuse it or uh, re re you're taking something and you're turning something else. That's what I'm trying to say. You got the point, right? So what we're talking about now is that here we're going through something really negative. It's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. But how can God turn it for good? How can I experience it, send it through one of my internal factories to produce something good out of it? Can you take lemons and make lemonade? Can you take coal and make diamonds? Can you take this and turn it into that? So what I want to give you as a tool tonight in our teaching from the Bible is we see through a mirror darkly. We don't live with the facts of our life. We interpret everything going on. And now that we're going on through a, a horrible uh, issue, a crisis, we're left with, ah! So what do we need to do? We need to, what do we need to do? We need to change our factories, transform them. We need to put new equipment in there. We need to recycle their purpose. We need to recycle the bad and turn it into good. Romans 8 says that. All things work together for good. It doesn't say all things are good because they're not. They're bad. But all things work together for good. For See, see. Joseph said that to his brothers who were betraying liars. He said, what you meant for harm, God used for good, for the saving of many souls. So what, we're, what I'd like to give you from the Bible tonight is that you have the power to create these factories in your brain that will use XYZ and turn it into XYZ. I come from Canada originally, and they have sand pits there, and they've learned to extract the oil from those sand pits but if you look at it it, it looks, just looks like dark sand but what we can do in canada we take from those sand pits and they extract it's now affordable to extract oil and and gasoline from there so uh that's what god wants us to do with our internal factories he wants us to experience good things and interpret those well but he wants us also ex experience crisis and interpret things well I was listening to Maxwell, uh, he gave a free seminar this week, and he said that uh, crisis never makes a person, but crisis reveals what's already in them. He said choices make the people. So what I want to give you tonight is really how to process crisis properly, f change your internal factories, and we can talk about that in the weeks to come, and turn our internal factories into healthy factories that re recycle garbage, bad stuff, turn it into something good, good stuff, like Joseph did. And that's what Romans 8 says. Does that make sense to you? So are you willing to change your internal factories that no matter what happens, you're going to filter it through your vat and come out smelling like roses, come out feeling really good about who you are and where you're going? Does that make sense to everybody? All right, I hope that's helpful for you because I'm praying that God's going to start helping you change your internal f factories. How do you do that? Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me figure out why I keep misinterpreting things, why I keep seeing things in a negative way. Holy Spirit, help me interpret things properly 
in a good way going through this crisis? Is there good that can come out of this crisis? Are there diamonds that can come out? I've seen stress come out. I've seen anger come out. I've seen blaming come out. I'm the guy on Prayer Mountain going, there's got to be good here. <laughs> I'll stubbornly say that and pray till it happens. That's what I want from you from this Bible study tonight. And these are two gentlemen that I want to bring up in just a second. And I want to, I want you to come on over here. I want Frank Hall to come up here because Frank is one of the gentlemen that he takes those lemons and turns them into lemonade. He takes bad and turns them into good. Because one thing I want to introduce, I want to introduce the fact that not only do you need to turn your, turn your internal engines and factories into something positive, better factories, um, I want you to actually become more outward oriented. And this is what I want to talk to Frank about, that he's not someone who's wallowing in self-pity. He's not wallowing in pain. He's literally saying, I'm going to get through this mess by being other people focused. So if you would, I want you to just turn to my friend. Come on over here. Come closer, my buddy. You don't have to sit so far away. Did that make any sense to you? Oh, absolutely, Pastor. That is uh, really inspiring because really we can get into a place of a rut and get to where we get so self-centered and just everything gets eternal. And then they, you get in there and you see, feel the depression, feel the anxiety, feel all the pressures of what's going on instead of allowing yourself to, to focus on something better. Yeah. See, see, and that's what you've done. So instead of letting it all be internal, we actually start focusing external. Yeah. And, and tell us some of the things that you're doing, because the dream we're doing, the Dream Center, yes. is killing it, is killing it, is killing it. But you went through a crisis last week where I heard you had to turn people away. T tell me about that. Yeah, so at Dream Center Las Vegas, we, we, were, we were always giving food away because people have a need. And so our whole goal is to bring compassion and love of God and giving them hope in the midst of that. Because when you're going through a crisis like this, people need hope. Hope deferred makes a heart grow sick. You know, and so we have to get to that place of helping people find their way in a positive way and then help them where we can. And so um, last you, but you were up to about 15,000 people a month. Is that right? That's correct. That's correct. That's a lot of people. That is a lot of families and people that we're helping. Um, we actually last Tuesday with the uh, what you were talking about, what happened was is that we geared up because we knew that there was going to be something going on. And with it, staying within the law of the land and the ordinances of set before us, yeah. 10 people at a time, we, we had to of thousands lost their job oh my goodness and and, and, and there are so many people that are still hurting so we shifted it up and we, we we got a plan together as a team and then as we did it we started giving out food and we started giving out food to like oh you know 10 at a time and we got up to about 175 people so it represents 175 families and then we had about 20 or 30 or so we had to turn away how do you feel about that i felt terrible my team started crying and tearing up i mean we've never had to do that before never never this is the first this is one of those first moments and all we were wanting to do is help now normally it would only be 120 to 150 families on that um that that tuesday but because of the increase we were up to 195 we had enough for 175 so the that day we said hey i told all my team we got to start praying just let's start praying and asking and crying out to God. Let's, you know, ask him first. And then we're going to put hands and feet to that. And then we, I started calling all of our friends and all the people we've worked for in the past and, and just really started reaching out. And then God and prayed. moved. We prayed, prayed, and you prayed, prayed. And prayed. And you prayed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Because our heart is at Dream Center um, Pastor is, is just to see people come to a place where they can know that God is caring for them. Even if they're not spending time with them, even if they're not um, I'm going to church, even if they're not whatever, they can come as they are and God is going to take care of their needs for at least that week. So what happened? So, okay, you don't have enough food for the first time ever. Yep. And now, now you've got families that were turned away. You start praying. You're all weeping before God and you started making phone calls. You got practical there. Yes. And you made phone calls and tell us what happened. So you put in wisdom to it. Like you said, you got to put a little wisdom to it. And, uh, all of a sudden and people started saying, calling me back and saying, Hey, I got your message. Uh, Nicole from, uh, Trader Joe's on, she's down on, she, she was, one of our partners on the one that we usually go to, and she moved locations. She called me up and says, hey, we got a bunch of food, Pastor. 
you want to come get it? Hey, I'll send a truck in about 20, 30 minutes. And then all of a sudden, other partners started coming. I had a, a big partner that, that told us, that, listen, we're going to start um, bringing you more uh, three times than what we used to give you. I mean, it just the doors started opening up, heaven started open, and then the multiplication of people showing up increased all the more. Well, tell me what happened. Well, we went from 175 families um, to 400 and something what? families. 400 and, and something families on everybody. Thursday. Had enough for everybody. Everybody, Pastor. I, got I, heard, I heard some people left with two or three boxes. They did. They did. <laughs> I was so impressed. I've I got to tell you a story about just... just uh, what Tuesday yesterday so what happened was is we had a mom that came and and one of my leaders um, took out a, of the boxes of food to her and her son is about 10 years old and we might have the if you can get the picture on the screen uh, we I, I gave a picture because this tells a story here's a mom uh, and she's coming with her son and when her son saw the food he became mom mom we got food and he be, he started crying she started crying he jumps up into her arms and pastor, it's one of those touching moments, if you can only imagine. And, um, and that, uh, they both started laughing and they got so happy. See, we're changing lives. We're helping people to see that there's a God that loves them and cares for them. There's a church where, where Dream Center Las Vegas is a church in our city, for our city. We are all one church, part of ICLV team. And, and pastor, I'm just so proud of our teams that we're seeing them have such compassion and such caring and wanting to see God move in people's lives to take them out of where they're at. And what we're finding, most people are full of fear and anxiety and worry and what about? And we're showing them that, hey, stay the course, understand that God loves you, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, the part of the miracle here, gang, is as we're reaching out, hey, does ICLV need help? Of course we do. What happens when you can't put all the people in our buildings? People have to give online. Some aren't used to it. It's not normal. Yeah. And so, oh, my goodness, we're having to trust God. Amen. You know, I don't know where, you know, how do you pay the mortgage? How do you pay the lights? How do you pay staff? How do you how do you pay for the truck gas? And and you guys put, you know, man, you, are you burning rubber in those trucks or something? <laughs> man, that gas bill is gas. high. It is. It is. You know, it. It, it, it's, I think you're burning, you're doing, what do you call it, figure eights in the parking lot or something. Yeah, it's funny because some people think that this is just subsidized or something. And I say, no, you understand something. We're doing it. It's thousands and thousands of dollars every month so that you guys can have food. Now, can you do me a favor? Can you tell everybody about uh, that you have a website right now where people can sponsor families for a full month? I, I think at thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. That'll give people food for a month. For a month. How can thirty dollars pay for food for a month? If I go to a restaurant, well, it can't go now. But <laughs> so, so how do you do that? I mean, thirty bucks will pay for a family for a month. Yes. So, Pastor, we know that God provides, but it's there's so much cost to running this ministry and helping these people and these families that we're asking for a thirty dollar donation those who can give thirty dollars they can actually know that they're they're able to feed a family for a month so what does that look like every week they're going to come and they're going to get uh, they're going to get food and and they're going to be able to take that food and take it home just the the meat alone is a worth dollar 30. a day it's yeah ridiculous dollar a day i paid two dollars for my coffee just now come on yeah so yeah. if I so I could help two families, if I gave up one coffee a day, I could help two full families. Isn't that amazing? And they could feed their whole family. I mean, we're talking, we're talking meat, we're talking seen your vegetables, food. we're talking eggs, uh, breads, pastries, everything. Uh, and and you know, we're just seeing people so so happy just that they're getting food so that they, you know, I had one lady that told me just last week. She says, you know, thank you so much. I didn't know how I was going to feed my family tomorrow. Tomorrow. Today, Tomorrow. it was already late. It was already nighttime. Because nobody was ready for to be laid off. No. Nobody was ready. Hey, Pasquale. Hey, big, look at that. Pasquale hey. just joined us. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, good, good to be you. here you with you guys. Fun? Yes, I'm having fun. Isn't that great, these stories? Yes, it is, Pastor. Amazing stories. Great. great Life, yeah. You yeah. people get saved. Yes. I mean, now, because you're going 10 by 10, mm -hmm. it's almost as if God's using us for good. Yes. Because you've got more time for each person. What the enemy meant for harm, God is turning for good. We're ministering to 10 at a time. We're seeing people um, give their life to Jesus. We're seeing people um, come together, understand how much God cares for them and love them, even though they might not have been putting any effort or any effort to actually having a relationship with him. But, Pastor, you wanted to talk about the DCLV Dream yeah. Center Las Vegas. Well, we'll look at that. It's on the screen it's right on the now. Screen to give? They can go ahead and give right now 
to this amazing, amazing ministry. Um, this is part of who we are as ICLV. It's always been part of who we are. For 28 years, we fed homeless, but now we're feeding families. Imagine 15 to 20,000, uh, thousand people every single week and now, or every single month, I should say, and now even more are coming. And, and so we need your help to help. Amen. A dollar a day can feed a family. Yeah. Yep. We've, we've got people that have such a great heart. They, they've started sponsoring four, five. I had yeah. one friend that said he's going to do four and his daughter's going to do one. His daughter. That's how much they had compassion for people, you know, that t- are less fortunate. So, so you're saying that one gentleman is going to sponsor four families. Yep. That's $120 a month. He's going to take care of four full families. Yes. I'm thinking that some of you that are watching right now, just go to the website there. He's got it already. Make that commitment. Don't just wallow in your pain. Hey, go sell your Rolex. Give it to them. Do whatever you need to do to sponsor families. Now, the last thing is before I have Pasquale get up, um, you're also introducing something that I really like. We've been talking about it for over a year and a half. Is this co-op? Mm. Now, that includes food and clothing and seminars and, and all kinds of stuff. It's And a co-op means cooperation. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Because that's going to be introduced very shortly. When's that coming out? You know what? We're still working on it, Pastor. It's going to be very soon. But we want to be able to give people opportunities to go to plays, to go to um, to lectures, to go to conferences, to to um, to get food when they need it, and then clothing bank. All these different things that we can do by just um, allowing them to be part of, uh, like you said, a co-op uh, type thing. And then and then in that. It's gonna, it's gonna take such a stress off their families. We wanna just, we wanna bring them hope. We wanna bring compassion. We wanna show the um, love of God. And we wanna make a difference in people's lives. Be, we're in our city for our city, right? See, this is a big deal. The co-op is going to be launched very soon, so go on his website to follow the co-op announcements. And what I like about it is someone like me can go there and for to become a co-op member for $30 a month, I get access to food, clothing, seminars. It's And one day we're going to be introducing, like for a single mom, going out and getting someone that can fix their car or, or fix the plumbing. Uh, the other day, one of our pipes was leaking, and they, they were going to charge me $900 for a leaky pipe. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> so we're, we're, we're building this co-op so that normal families who might not be on the streets, but normal families that just got laid off, they, they don't know where the next, do- the next meal is going to come from, or they're just looking to, to make their dollar stretch. So for $30, you get $100 worth of stuff or $200. So this co-op, I'm very, very excited because this is for the normal middle class family that might need a little bit of help, uh, or that cooperation. I'm super thrilled that he's launching this. We've talked about it for over a year. And at a time like this, we said now is the time where he's got to launch it uh, so that this becomes something super, super significant to help families like you. Now, if you know families that need help, send them to their website. They're setting up appointments right now, but also to uh, get them involved in the co-op because I don't want to go to a feeding where, where, where it's just people that are so poor. But man, if I could be part of a co-op where I'm investing in it to help myself, help my family, my kids, whatever, I might just go there and get food for other people. So, but I'd like to give back. I don't want to just take. So that's the co-op is very significant for me. So if you want to know more about that, you're on Facebook. Is that true? Yeah, we're on Facebook. Um, What's it called? DreamCenterLasVegas.com. And it's amazing. They're doing some Facebook. stuff that'll make you cry. Uh, but I want you to really support them financially. I want you to support them in prayer. And I'm saying this today because I want you to be other centered. Um, there are business people right now that are becoming other centered. I think that's so significant. So, uh, if you're in your home right now, can you give Frank a big hand? Everybody out here, give Frank a big hand with what he's doing. He is a rock star. All right. I want to introduce our next guest. His name is Pasquale Urobazo. Pasquale, you started something on Sunday that, uh, where did he go? He left us. You don't want to hang with us? Well, I thought I was going to just let you guys Stay go for there it. If you, you... Come on. Stay with us, okay. man. <laughs> He didn't. He wants to get out of here or something. He's got a date with his wife. No, we can't go anywhere. Oh, anyway, so uh, Pasquale started something on Sunday because when when everybody was shifted online, of course, we got to believe God for all of our finances and our mortgage and everything else that the salaries and, and everything else that we do. We're going, God, how are you going to do this? So Pasquale, he says, listen, how about if we just pray for people? 
Now, that might sound like the silliest response, but he says, I'm going to have a drive through prayer. Come on. It wasn't about finances, about our people and loving on them. And all of a sudden, they, they, they wanted to drop by offerings. Yes, they, yes, they did, Pastor. Tell us what happened, because it was insane. What we did, we announced that we did it one third last week on a Thursday, and uh, that's how we started on a Thursday, put some tents up, uh, put some signs out on the road, and um, it was really, really good because one sign says, stop for prayer. So people would just stop or stop and go get prayer, and uh, they'd come in, and a few fam few. Uh, a few gentlemen said, well, I'll be right back, went home and got their families. Can you please bless our whole family? And so I would pray for them. And um, if they ha have any needs for food, I would recommend, I would tell them to go to the Dream Center in Las Vegas. Wow. And then we started with that. And I believe what we're doing there was something in the supernatural to manifest itself but more in the natural. So what happens on, so, so we announced that we'll be out there for Sunday. And uh, we said, we're there for prayer for you. And if, uh, if you, if you'd like to come and drop by your tithes and offerings, hey, we'll, we'll have a team there. To receive. By the way, it was uh, yeah. His real purpose was to pray for people. Yeah, it was really uh, <laughs> to pray, and uh, and and you know, it's it's interesting how people pull up. That's the first thing they wanted to do was give, and I, I think you were out there. I was out there. Them, I was shocked. One of them was crying, coming in, and just we prayed for him and prophesied over him, and and but he for he pulled up to give. And he, it was his heart. He's a giver. And, um, in the scripture that comes out about a giver, it's in, uh, second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six. But I, this I say, he who sows sparingly also will weep sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So they, each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or in necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. This guy pulled in cheerfully wanted. That's his first thing to give. He didn't want to miss that day. He didn't want to miss Sunday. But pastor, mm. the people that were coming in on the drive through prayer. Mm. And uh, there's a, I put a picture on Facebook. There was a, a father with two kids. Or all three of them were riding bikes, and they pull up for prayer. That was amazing. Uh, and then we had someone come up in a van with the whole family. Uh, I had Larry Thomas and Bobby Blank spend a little more time with the f wow. entire family. So it was a great day, and um, we're going to do it here again this Sunday. And I heard you're doing it uh, Thursday, aren't you? Well, tomorrow they're expecting uh, some rain and stuff, so we decided to uh, move it to either to Friday okay. or Sunday. But and, and we're gonna, we're, the team is uh, going to connect with me later on today. Good. If it is, we'll announce it. Good. We're trying to find the perfect time when people can come. Wow. Uh, because uh, we, there's more traffic. That people, we're reaching the people that are not even, don't even go to church. Right. Amen. I saw a lot of those people. Yeah. So. But for Sunday, for sure, yeah, we're having prayer from nine to twelve thirty. Um, just amazing, and uh, like I said, hey, we're here. Come through the drive-through prayer. We're gonna bless you and uh, pray for you. I have some of the prophetic team there. They prophesy. If you yeah, everybody was getting prophecies. Yes, it was exciting. Uh, yeah, you knew. I even uh, jumped in there. Yeah, you jumped in there. <laughs> um, I loved it because Pastor Denise went out there. Yeah, she was able to uh, uh, meet the first. Uh, this first. Um, person that pulled up the drive through and she was able to pray and prophesy over her over this lady and and um she's an amazing she's a, she's a nurse looking to transition to do a wow. different job and she got a word of the lord it just just it was just amazing and so so we're looking forward to that and um and if you're watching right now for sure on sunday we're looking for tomorrow but oh, you'll see a facebook page come out i mean uh, i'll come out later on but uh for sunday from 9 to 12.30, come by the drive through prayer. We'll be praying. Um, just come in and, 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 and get some prayer and, and uh, you get a prophetic word. Um, it's just amazing how God shows up. And, you know, one of the prophetic things we seen on, sun, on last Sunday was there was a, a rainbow that showed up over us. But it wasn't just a normal rainbow. You know, rainbow goes from one side to the other. This rainbow was like a circle above us. And the rainbow, I really, was the promises of God. Wow. So we were just amazed with that. Uh, uh, Albert, our security team guy, was there. He goes, look at that rainbow. It was like looking up. <laughs> and it was just amazing. We are trying to get the cat bus because the bus uh, pulls up all the time. Yeah. I was trying to let they open the door. I was, I was going to get on and say, hey, anybody need prayer? On the cat. So we're going to try that this week and get on the bu cat bus there. See, the, what we're talking about is how to get through crisis. Number one, fix your 
internal factories. Number two, start reaching out to others and be other-centered. Number three, the power prayer. And number four is giving. Now, we need your help because if there's ever been a time that ICLV on all of our campuses need uh, your help. It's now. I had a gentleman the other day. He texted me. He says, hey, can I drop by and give an offering? I said, I'll be there. So I drove from my house literally just so it'd be easier for him to drop it off. And I know you had that. So he wrote a check for $200 and that helped us. And, and we had a, we, we really needed miracles on the Dream Center. Yeah. You had someone give you a check for 10000 Yes. And wow. that helped, right? It, yes, it did. It was just the hearts of people are just coming alive. I mean, and you know, when you give, there's something that, that breaks in, inside of you that breaks off that, that stuff that's trying to really get at you. It, it feels so good to give, you know, and, and pastor, we've seen people just, they're just coming up and wanting to pour in and give to something because they're struggling, but they want to help somebody else. You know, they're struggling in their emotions and all the things that's going on. Can't go to, go to work, can't go to the gym, can't go, but they, listen, I can go and help somebody. Yeah. Give it, it should be given on you, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask Pasquale to pray for us before you give. And you can just push that button and give online. Uh, just There should be something up on the screen. We're still kind of working on the kinks of our Wednesday nights now. But I hope this is helping you. I want to be super practical, mm. super biblical, super good mental health stuff. And it, it's just living a life of giving. When things get the worse, it's best to give. Pasquale, would you pray for us before we yes. give? Yes. You know, you, when you said about pressed down, shaken together, yeah. I remember going to, you sent me somewhere to pray for this organization that does uh, first time home buyers. Oh. And I got up on the platform, they want me to bless a prayer. And I said, well, why don't we prophetically, just all of us that are in here that are applying for homes, to so put your hand like this. Mm. And um, everybody in the whole place put their hand like this. And I said, now this is just a prophetic sign of you receiving. I tell you, the presence of God fell in that place. It was inside a, a casino, a hotel. I mean, it was just amazing that was, that was how God moves anywhere. Anywhere. Listen, you're watching right now. Yeah. I believe in in uh, sowing and reaping. And God loves a cheerful giver. Mm-hmm. It's not the time to stop giving. It's not the time. to. It, it's even more now because we can't get together as a big group. But we can still got the technology and the resources so you can give. So as you give this evening, I'm going to just bless you with a prayer. Father, I just thank you for your presence. And we give with a cheerful heart. And, Father, everybody that's watching, I would ask you, Lord, right now, just to invade their rooms or their offices or their, in their living room or wherever they're watching from. I bless them. Bless them with your presence, Father. And, Father, your word is clear. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Uh, on earth as it is in heaven in their life this is not the time to shrink back this is the time to move forward with the promises that you have for us which are yes and amen yes and amen and then the no weapon formed against your people will prosper i declare and decree that in jesus name i pray amen 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 uh Gang, while while you're giving right now uh pasquale and frank are gonna head down and i want my next guest guest to come up his name is Ron Portaro, and he's been a best friend for 27 years. And I remember the first time I met him, he was here when my mentor was speaking at our church, Dr. Richard Dobbins. And he'd actually been to a seminar with Dr. Richard Dobbins, so he knew of him. And then I remember going out to lunch. Come on over here, Ron. Come and sit. Uh, sit with your buddy. It's great to see you. Uh, I asked. Oh, yeah, elbow bump. Elbow bump. Sorry. Um, I asked Ron to come on. Not only was he a law professor, he gave it all up to stay in Vegas. So that's kind of a that's kind of a wow moment, and I said, would you st- would you stay here in Vegas and give up your career as a professor and and stay in Vegas as a volunteer? What a great offer, right? Come and work for the church, and I'll pay you nothing. <laughs> and and he talked to his princess Lynn, and and they decided to stay here, and and it's been a journey. We wouldn't be on this land without your help, because you uh, did the interface with BLM and. And uh, I'm so glad you're here. I, but he's also a crisis expert. So I thought if anybody can help us work through crisis, let's get super practical and get one of the professors here because you help negotiate with the city. And tell everybody what you do. First, I love Jesus. Yeah, I know. And, Pastor, it's a pleasure to be here to minister together with you. Um, I've had the very fortunate uh, opportunity for 25 years in, in the city of Las Vegas to serve as what I would call a partnering facilitator. 
I bring groups of people together who may have different agendas, but my role and my responsibility, Pastor, is to get them on the same page with the same understanding and then move them forward in the same direction so that they come together with different agendas, but at the end of our sessions or our time together, they're all on the same page with one agenda and one mission. Wow. And so I've had the very fortunate... That's fortune- not easy, right? <laughs> well, it, it, it takes some doing because it, it, sometimes it's hurting cats. Yeah. But other times um, you have willing participants who just need a tool. Wow. And, and I serve as a facilitator to help pe- people partner together. And, and in doing so, um, with their commitment up front, I can help them get to the other side of where they want to be at the end of our session together or the project because we work construction. Um, the city of Las Vegas is one of my clients. been working for them for 20 years doing 20 years. Con- yeah, con- construction projects. Um, NDOT, uh, done some projects for the city council. Right. Uh, for Public Works is, is one of my major clients. Wow. And, and it's just a pleasure. Actually, um, they're clients, but I love doing it. Uh, if I didn't need to feed my family, I, I'd probably do it for free. But <laughs> Shh, don't but say it, that. <laughs> yeah, but it but it is a pleasure to do that. And then having done that, I've been able to bring that to the church yeah. and and come alongside you and partner with our different ministries over the years. We've we've started from nothing, 250 people, yeah, to thousands yeah. over the years, and and uh, ten thousand part of that. Yeah, around I, the world. Well, yeah, and and, and I would want to say this. Um, you you mentioned John Maxwell. Yeah, and um, I spent four hours the other day listening to to Maxwell's first session on uh, leadership in crisis. Yeah, and then I took notes there, and I, and I created an outline of the notes and and some of the key points that that he is talking about with his team yeah. on leader leading through crisis, leading yeah. in crisis. But let me mention this. You spent eight to ten years yeah. with the Maxwell Group going to France, right? And we know France is one of the most hard-hit countries right now, terribly hard-hit. And there are pastors over there, and pastor, you can even tell me because I'd like to know how many leaders did you train who are faith-based? Many of them, not all of them, but most of them are, yeah. and who are probably right now stepping in the middle of this crisis yep. because you and the team and the church sent you. To be part of the Maxwell, how many people are we? Do we have over there? I think in in the twelve years, I, I would I would suspect easily uh, twelve thousand uh, leaders that we've trained easily. Probably I'm underestimating. I apologize to my director out there. His name's Greg Reyes. Uh, I I'm sorry if I, I know I'm going low, but it's at least ten thousand that we've trained uh, that are now mobilized. They're knowing what to do during this crisis because they're shut down. They've been shut down for some, sometimes they're, they're right now. They're saying about three months they're going to be shut down. Yes. So how are they reacting? Others are getting involved in governments, Ron. Others are starting companies. So it's like, you're right. They were prepared for such a time as this. Yes. And, and part of it is there's several keys and I, I could, we could be here four hours talking about some of these concepts. But the first one you, you mentioned earlier with, with Pastor Frank was put others first. Yeah. In, in crisis, in life, as a believer, as someone who is faith-based, it begins with putting others first. Yeah. And when you put others first in a crisis, it gives you less time to look at yourself and say, woe is me. Mm. And, and, and if I could encourage everyone out there, put others first. What can I do? Now, see, we, we all have talents and gifts. Mm. I use some talents and gifts the Lord has given me yeah. with the city, with NDOT, as a facilitator. What gift do you have mm. that you can take and serve others, mm. lift others, or add value to people? Mm. And, and so those are some of the points that, that Maxwell's talking about, but it's something we've been talking, about, been talking about here at ICLV for 25 years. And, and then the other thing is make, make sure – that as you lead in crisis or go through crisis, the first place you lead is the person in the mirror. Yeah. Start with yourself. Wow. What can I do and what am I doing? And assess it in the reality of it, Pastor. So how can you lead others if you're not leading yourself? That's correct. Because, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God, correct? Well, you, you and God, you and the Lord, and, and then all these things. It's a formula for success. And it really is leading in crisis. Go here first, me and me and God, and then and then all these things. And then I'll go. If if I'm right, I can help other people be right, think right, do right, 
act right. You know, you, that's such a great point. I, I call it self-care as a counselor that, uh, like yesterday, I put in a 12, 13, 14 hour day and, and then I realized, man, I need to go for a walk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like I needed to make my body was screaming because I've been working here and here, but my body had been neglected that day because I'd worked all day. Yep. I probably had five cups of coffee sure. and, uh, oh, yeah. and it, it was not, I was not kind to my body and I had to go for a walk and afterwards I felt better. I had a great night's sleep, but I needed that, it, that self care. So how can I lead others and neglect my own body? And I was, I was neglecting it. Yeah, and, and that's important because we, we have to take care of ourselves physically, yep. mentally, psychologically, emotionally, financially, and relationally. Yep. All those things are intertwined, intermixed at the same time. And so if we can go serve somebody, first take care of yourself, yeah. go serve somebody, lift somebody, add value to somebody. You know, you, it's such a great point, too. What about finances? Because this is what I'm realizing that, you know, they always say have six months of, of – uh, paychecks in the bank uh in case for uh, in case of a rainy day yeah. <laughs> we've got a rainy day yeah, we do and and even as companies but i know as a church we've not done that we've been pedal to the metal giving it away giving away millions all the time and not saying man i'm gonna save for a rainy day and have that savings account i mean the giving we're doing great yes better than great awesome wonderful but on that saving part it was like mm, does it make sense? Yes, and, and part of what everyone goes through, yeah. hopefully they grow through. Yeah. Ooh. Okay? And so if, if you can take your, take your situation wherever you are, wherever you may be, you, you might be um, financially well off and, and, and praise God for that. Mm. But if you're struggling, and I had a family member, one of my, one of my children lost their job Monday. Yeah. Went from full-time employment to zero. Yeah, zero. And, and now that family member can get by for a little while, but not real long. No. And so what are we going to learn? Are you learning today to set yourself up for tomorrow? I like what you said. Don't just go through it. Grow through it. Yes, absolutely. So how can we do that? Tell us how to grow through it. First, get a, I think you first get a good sense of reality. Mm. What is real in this crisis versus what is perceived? Mm. I can't be of any value to myself and to others if I don't have a, a, a real clear sense of reality. Okay? So I'm going to try to get the facts. I'm, listen, if you listen to the news, <laughs> stop or be very selective or don't listen to it all the time. Yeah. It, it, because there are agendas and motivations behind what you hear, what you listen to, or who you watch. And, and so my, my encouragement is, is to go ahead and start with reality make the assessment, and then get others around you. Now, in this, in this crisis, we're not going to get them sitting next to me, right. but I'm going to get them Twitter, right. Facebook, telephone. Um, and, and so get a team. Who's your team? Who is your inner circle of people that you're going to partner with, like I do with the city or with NDOT, and, and come together, make a plan, and then how am I going to move forward? Mm. Don't do it alone. Mm. You'll, you'll end up alone. I like that. But if, you, but if you can get a clear sense of reality, make a plan, execute the plan with others, because you're not the, you don't have all the gifts. Mm. You don't have all the answers. No. But guess what? Two are better than one. I like, uh, I like what Ron's saying. This is, we can't spend much more time on this right now because we're going to this we wanted to really do this in 45 minutes so you can get a good feeding on a Wednesday night and get through the rest of your week uh, and grow through it uh and then Sunday we're going to be online again and God's given me a powerful word for you uh also we've got all kinds of great things happening every single day there to inspire you on our social networking even Paul Mark Goulet on my Facebook I've got like 12 almost 12,000 people there that that every day they're going okay give me a word give me something to get me through this day and grow through it what's one last thing we can give them one last thing i would say this choices and consequences mm. there are always consequences for every choice make here's what i tell people make good choices but do even one better than that mm. take an o out of the word good mm. and what do you get god mm. make god choices mm. before you enter into your executed plan how am i going to go through this is god on board am i on board are my friends as my pastor on yeah. board and, and so if I make good God choices, um, we'll get through this. 
Now, I know you got a lot of notes from the Maxwell uh, seminars that were, was free and it's not done. Can we access those seminars or can yes. we access your notes? So if you go to the John Maxwell team. Yeah. Dot com, uh, you will find John's teachings uh, and there's three or four days of it. And one's a Q&A. Yeah. And it, and it is rich. It is full of nuggets of wisdom, of encouragement, of advice, counsel uh, based upon a foundation hmm. of, of core values yeah. that, that we've known for many years about the Maxwell team. Yeah. And we've, yes. I mean, we wouldn't be here without John's influence on our lives. Um, so I want to just end with this thought that I, I want to thank Ron. And, and I, you know, I'm going to bring him back because there's so much more. He's a law professor. Of course, he could teach us all night, uh, but access some of these things that he's learned through the years as a consultant. So what I'm going to encourage you to do in closing is don't beat yourself up for not having six months of savings. Yes. Grow through it. Learn through it. Secondly, <laughs> the more you beat yourself up, the less you can fight the problem. So imagine this. You're going to, you're, you're going to keep hitting yourselves, but your enemy is, is – Society is the, the, the problems in society, I should say, is, is the enemy from the pit. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of enemies. Uh, why are you beating yourself up? Okay, say, God forgive me. God cleanse me. I'm going to find team members. That's correct. That, that's huge. Like Ron's my team member for 27 years. Well, who do I call? Hey, Ron. <laughs> I, and when I was younger, I was stupider, I think. I, I was more fired up, and I, I wanted to overreact and, and, and say nasty, you know. But that fire... Pastor has gotten us to where we are. Yes. Because there's a fire. You were on fire. The church caught the fire. Yes. And, and we are now, and we've accomplished together because of that fire. I appreciate I, that. I don't discount it whatsoever. No, but he's kept me out of problems a lot. <laughs> and uh, I hope I've been there for him in a, in a fractional way. You have. You have all these years. I really love you. And, and love you too. So I, I'm sure we're going to bring him back, and I'm sure there's more resources that he can tap us into because it's not just, oh, I want to feel good about Jesus. It's Jesus is giving us wisdom, if any. And James says, if any ma man or woman lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives freely. So I want to throw that out to you in closing. We're going to close in prayer, and I'm going to ask Ron to pray for us because I'm really believing that this these are tools that we want to give you. Share it with your friends. Share it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever wherever else you're on right now, because we want to get this message out here on YouTube as well. Um, this past Sunday was great because we, we were able to touch, uh, my goal was over 10,000 lives and, and we touched over 10,000 people watch this online and how many more can be reached because you and I are sharing with our friends. It's an inspiring message, but it's also super practical, super, uh, mental health, biblical, and we could even get illegal things too, which we won't do tonight, but <laughs> I'm going to ask him to close in prayer for us. And I hope this has helped you. I love you. I love you. I can't wait to see you, uh, here at ICLV, uh, the mountain, the dream center, Summerlin campus, um, a powerful word and great worship that they were recording today that will blow your mind. So all kinds of great resources. Stay tuned. I love you and don't give up. Grow through it. Don't just go through it. Ron, can you pray? Yes, thank you, Pastor. Oh. Let's bow. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to sit tonight and share concepts, ideas, thoughts on where you want us to go and how you want us to grow. Lord, we, and I include myself, we've all probably been through crisis. As a child, maybe in a divorced family, or maybe sickness and health, or, or some other financial crisis, uh, loss, losses pe that people have had. Mm -hmm. Lord, I think most people out there have been through crisis. Mm -hmm. This is something we've never experienced, but Lord, we turn to you. Mm -hmm. We surrender who we are. Mm -hmm. We choose today to put others first, to get the right people around us, mm -hmm. to formulate a plan that is your plan, because many are the plans mm -hmm. in a man's heart, your word says, but the Lord, you, Lord, determine our steps. So we choose to put the right people around, make a great plan according to your word. To your, and, Lord, so we thank you for Pastor Paul and his leadership, uh, Pastor Pasquale, Pastor Frank, and all those here today, and our, and our ICLV team, our Dream Center team, our Mountain team. And, Lord, we thank you and praise you and bless you. And for everyone out there, seek him, and he will order your steps. Mm. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Wow. Amen.
He'll order your steps. I'll see you tomorrow on Facebook and Friday on Facebook and, and uh, YouTube. And, and uh, make sure you invite a friend to uh, YouTube slash ICLV on Sunday for those messages or on Facebook. I love you with all my heart. Now, don't forget, if you want food, contact our Dream Center online. Let them know we need food. If you know a family that needs food, tell them. We also have two trailer trailer full full of uh, stuff, like diapers and all kinds of things coming, not this week. Pro- we're believing God for next week. They've already told us those two full trailers, 48 pallets of stuff is coming to us so we can distribute that on top of the food. So, man, miracles are happening. All I was on the phone with them the other day, and today they I was told two full uh, tractor trailer full of uh, goods are coming, things that you might need to help your family to help your kids or whatever. So they're all coming, um, and we'll be announcing the date and the places of pickup and distribution coming real soon. So stay tuned at our websites and our Facebook and all that. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow on all of our, uh, all of our resources. Take care.